Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. Today I want to do a video about one of the many aspects that go into how haircutting works. And it's really going to be like a whole bunch of metaphors and just concepts. So essentially I want to talk about how complicated haircutting actually is. Now this video is not going to help you to be able to run to your barber and request a better haircut based on what you learn off this video. And even if you are somebody who does cut hair, outside of maybe an aha moment about something you knew about hair but you didn't know that you knew about hair you're probably not going to like walk away from this video with any new technical knowledge or understanding of how to do a haircut but i have i feel like i have to do this because our internet culture these days th there's like this whole pocket in the hair industry that boils down haircuts to what length what product and that's it and haircutting is such a big complex deep thing if you sit down in a barber chair and they pull out a ruler to cut your hair run because haircutting is not lengths. It's been boiled down as such just to probably make it easier to feel like you got something online. Like, oh, he told me his hair was four inches on top, so that's the haircut. But it doesn't work that way. It's so complicated and so complex. So here for the next couple minutes, I wanna talk about some of these complexities and really what goes into a haircut that makes the difference between like, I got a haircut and I got a haircut that styles really easily and grew out really gracefully. It's a very, very subtle, nuanced thing, but the approach to haircutting will create a massive, massive difference in the outcome of your haircut. So I'm gonna talk about this stack of printer paper here. Totally a metaphor for hair, but I wanted to use printer paper because we can all kind of imagine how this is gonna act and react. So every time you take a section of hair out for a haircut, imagine that it's a stack of paper. Now, if I took this stack of paper and I, I stacked it about evenly across, and I held it in the same place here, it'll fall in each direction just as easily. It doesn't fall any more easily to one side than the other. It kind of wants to go both ways just as well. Now imagine that I took this same stack of paper and I staggered it so that it's very long on one side and very short on the other. Now, if I bend it this way, it very easily wants to fall down, even more easily than when it was stacked straight across. It just wants to flop down to where if I try to fold it the other way, it doesn't want to go there. In fact, it pops up. It has volume, you might say. So every slice of hair you take out, every section, you want to think of it like that stack of paper. And you can stagger it in ways that'll make it easily want to fall or not want to fall at all. And really, if you break it down, what a haircut is, is a series of, do I want this to stand up or do I want this to lay down? At the core of it, that's, that's essentially it. So here's kind of how that looks in a, in a practical way. If I had a haircut, let me stand here so you can kind of see this. If I cut all these hairs to the same length, where I just pulled them straight off the head, and I cut them to a shape that was essentially echoing the shape of the head. So really, like let's say, I don't know what that is, two and a half, three inches. Let's say I cut every hair to two and a half inches, and they're all the same length all the way back. This hair is gonna wanna bend just as much as this hair will. And as all the hair lays back, this hair is, granted, you could blow dry it up and use pomades and, thing to, and things to make it bigger in the front, but it's, this is gonna fall nice and flat and easy this is gonna fall just as flat and easy on top of it to where a more traditional like proper men's haircut is gonna be longer in the front. So rather than having it kind of come up here as the head comes up here, if I leave this longer and take all this shorter, to where it's taller in the front, you can see that. Now these shorter hairs here are gonna be more rigid than these hairs. And so when I tell them to lay back, they'll pop up a little bit and they'll support the longer hairs in the front. And that's how haircutting works. The same principle applies with a graduated bob. If I took a long haircut and I pulled everything out here and cut it to the same length, then there'd be nothing to push up this hair out here. But by graduating the hair and making it shorter near the bottom, those short hairs offer support to push out the longer hairs on top. And that's how you get a traditional graduated bob. So anytime you're doing a haircut, any little section of hair you pull out that's a stack of paper. And you have to ask yourself, do I want it to stack up and stick out or do I want it to bend and lay down? And so when, when you're watching somebody do your haircut or when you're doing a haircut and they're taking a million little slices of hair, each one of those you're reading, which way do I want this paper to bend? Because if I stagger it one way, it'll want to stick out. If I stagger it the other way, it won't want to stick out, it'll want to lay down. So there's our big base principle of haircutting there. Now let's throw in some factors that make it a little more complex. 
I did this demonstration using this printer paper, of course. And again, if I want the hair to stick out, I can stagger it this way. If I want the hair to fall down, I'll stagger it this way. I can control how I want the hair to act based on how I stagger the papers, as we've said. Imagine that instead of printer paper, I had tissue paper, right? Like the kind you stuff into a bag for a gift. If I had a stack of that, the same basic principles would apply. It would fall more easily toward the long side than it would toward the short side, but it would be considerably less rigid than this paper. We would have to probably use much less length, and we probably have to use much more pieces of paper, more density, and there would be, like if I handed you this stack of paper and I said, hey, make that top piece stick out as much as you can, you can figure out how to do that. If I handed you tissue paper and said the same thing, you could do it, but it would be a lot harder. Now let's imagine instead of the tissue paper or the printer paper, let's imagine we have cardstock. And I say, hey, I want you to take that cardstock and make it lay down. You could stagger it in such a way that it would more easily want to fall and bend like this, but you would probably also need a considerable amount of length. It would have to be a pretty long piece of cardboard. So factoring in these different materials and imagining how you would have to build this staggered shape accordingly in order to make the thin paper stand up or make the thick paper fall down, and we can all kind of imagine what that would be like, that's exactly what it's like working with hair. If somebody has very fine hair and they say, I want it to stick out, you have to now calculate, hang on, this hair is really, really flexible. How can I stagger this shape? How, what can I do in here to make it do that? And now this is like, even this big base principle about the, the overall shape of the haircut, it, it breaks down even further. When you look into texturizing hair, you're cutting microscopic angles along the edge of the surface to coerce the hair even further. And so that's like a whole other video altogether. But same thing if somebody comes in and they have very, very coarse hair and you're like, they say, I want this to lay down. You're not gonna use the same shape of haircut to make coarse hair lay down that you would use to make fine hair lay down. I mean, you can, but it doesn't always work the same. You, will, you have to kind of tweak things a little bit differently. Like if you want the cardboard to, to bend and flop, you do something different than if you want the tissue paper to bend and flop. You know what I'm saying? And so it's because of this that when somebody says, hey, take two inches off, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you want. What do you want for your hair? Um, not, not that I would ever hold it against the client for asking for two inches off. What I typically would do is take two inches off of where they're looking at the two inches and then build the rest of the shape of the haircut based on these factors. Let's keep adding more factors. And so throughout this demonstration, I've been bending the paper this way and bending the paper this way to get it to act how I want. If I want this same paper to fall, I'll bend it this way. If I want the same paper to stand up, I'll bend it this way. And I'm deciding which way it leans. You've got natural growth patterns in your hair. Your hair grows out of your head the way it grows out of your head. So every time we take one of those sections of hair out and we pull it out and we're considering which way to stagger it to make it stand or lay down, the direction that it grows out of your head is not determined by you, it's determined by your head. So if it's growing out this way, that's what it's doing. And then you get to determine which way to stagger it to get it to either stand up or lay down. If you have a cowlick, let's say, that's a case where your, your hair's falling in two different directions. So now, how do you work around that? Oh, I got to do a haircut. The hair lays in two different directions. I want it to all lay this way. So maybe you stagger this side of the cowlick one way and this side of the cowlick the other way, right? So when you go to cosmetology school, and I don't know about barber school, I didn't go there. They don't hand you a ruler and say, here's how you take two inches off. They teach you about this. They teach you about the geometry and the way that it'll build and, and reduce and, and just replace weight all over the head to make the hair act accordingly. And granted, with the whole direction the hair's laying thing, styling can play a huge part in it, but that therein lies another factor there. You, you have to look and play with the hair to figure out how much it's willing to style and go in the other direction. And then you have to factor in how much work the client wants to do or can do. I mean, I've worked on some hair that I can get it to do this, but the client can't. And uh, so you factor all of that in as well and to try to determine how am I gonna cut this staggered angle here to make everything work for the client. And in this demonstration, I'm using straight papers. Not everybody has straight hair. Imagine that those papers had some kind of built-in bend to them. They automatically wanted to go one way. Now, how do I coerce it to go the other way? If it grows out of the head like this and it bends this way and I want it to go this way, I'm stacking factors that I have to sit and kind of like I wish I had the effect to put all the math symbols around me here, but that's what it's like doing a haircut. So somebody comes in and say, hey, take an inch off. I'm like, okay, let me look at your hair and figure out what's going on here. And so it's for all of these reasons that I'm pointing out here about how hair works, that when somebody online says, hey, I got a haircut and it's not laying right in the back, what can I do different? It's like, I need to feel your bones. Like I sit down with every new client and I do this and I feel their head. I need to feel your bones. I need to comb your hair around and push it around, see which way each page is growing out of the head. 
And then I'm gonna have to pull it off your head and see how I can make it fit your bone structure and at the same time include all of those staggers and angles to make things stand and lay the way we want them to. It's not a simple thing I can say on the screen like, oh, well, wait, did they cut it to two and a half inches? Oh yeah, tell them to do two and three quarters. That'll, that'll make all the difference. I mean, it's not that simple. It's such a case by case thing where we're working with a raw material like a stack of papers here that has its own individual characteristics and you kind of have to be able to feel it and touch it and move it to know what needs to be done. So anyways, I just wanted to rant on this topic and shed a little bit of light onto what goes into the difference between someone who knows how to do a haircut and someone who knows how to cut hair. Not that I'm saying, oh, I'm so great. I know, I know how to cut hair, I have all the answers, but there's a big difference. I mean, you can go do haircuts and have a great living and, and make people very happy with their hair, but when you find somebody who's like, oh, I got out of school, I got my license, I did a two year long apprenticeship where I did intense training, this is what they're learning is these foundations, these fundamentals to haircutting that allows them to customize everything to each individual head. And here's the crazy thing is, if I put up a picture on the screen of a haircut, or if you're scrolling through Instagram and you see any haircut, you cannot look at the haircut and know whether it was cut this way or this way. But if you've ever gotten a haircut to where every time you style it, it's easier to style than it's ever been. And then in two weeks as it grows out, it grows out really gracefully. That's what this does. When you're factoring, if, if you're pulling up every piece of hair, you're going, okay, two inches off that one, two inches off that one, two inches off that one. It might work, it might not work. If you're pulling up every piece of hair and going, okay, which way does it grow? Which way does it want to lay? Which way do I want it to lay? If I stagger it right there and then texturize it, this way, like when that's your approach to a haircut, you might not see it immediately in the photo, but you will feel it a week or two weeks later. Anyways, I, I, as far as consumers, people getting haircuts, I don't know what to tell you. Um, if you go to an experienced haircutter, they're more likely to cut hair this way. If you go to somebody who's just been cutting hair a couple years, they're less likely, unless they've done some intense training, they're less likely to cut hair this way. And so I guess that's my advice if you wanna see what this kind of haircut is about, is go to somebody who's really, really good. They'll probably have a long wait and a high price, but it might be worth trying to find somebody who knows the fundamentals of haircutting to give you a customized piece such as this. Now, if you are a hair cutter and you're watching this, and if any of this was kind of aha moments to you, this is fundamentals of hair cutting. And I don't mean to say that to say, oh, why don't you know the basics? Because I actually, for like 10 years, didn't think about hair this way. And I just did haircuts and I didn't know how to cut hair. And it wasn't until much later that I finally, I was actually gifted a fundamentals course. And I never wanted to go take a fundamentals course because I was like, you know what? I, I've been cutting hair a couple years. I'm making money. I'm good. I don't need the fundamentals. That's for someone who's just starting. But these fundamentals will change the way that you look at hair. Um, I don't currently have a course on it available, but I highly recommend Matt Beck, Free Salon Education. Um, he does a lot of this kind of haircutting. I highly recommend Mike from the Kingly Hair Group. They, do, they, they are all about fundamentals. Um, DJ Muldoon is a legend. He's, he teaches this stuff very well. And then Travis Parker down in San Diego. Um, that's actually where I went and learned a crash course on the fundamentals over a weekend. So, you know, if any of this was like a light bulb aha moment to you and you're like, oh, I want to try to approach hair more that way, go check out those types of courses. Um, just go back to basics, fundamentals. I believe Andrew Carruthers on YouTube teaches a lot of this as well. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I hope this was informative and helpful. Um, I know that typically people want to go to YouTube to have a problem solved, not an explanation as to why I can't solve your problem. But again, anybody on the screen who's like, hey, I need help with this. The answer is almost all the time you need a better haircut. And it could be as simple as this versus this. And I can't tell you that through a screen. Thanks for watching.